Okay, we've now spent some time talking about things that can affect the movement of ions across the membrane. Specifically, we talked about how diffusion can affect the movement of cells in the movement of ions into and out of a cell. So for example, if I set up a cell here where I had a concentration of sodium outside of 100 millimolar and a concentration inside of 10 millimolar, and I put a sodium channel here and said, which way will sodium diffusion tend to go? You would know diffusion tends to go from high to low concentration. So I'm going to say that most of the movement of sodium is going to be inward from high to low. And you would be right as far as diffusion goes. But what we're going to do right now is talk about another thing which can affect the movement of ions specifically across membranes. And that's the idea of membrane potential. To understand that, we're going to have to start with the idea of what electrical potential is. So I'm going to erase this and we'll come back to it in a little bit. All right. Let's start with this idea of electrical charge. So I want you to imagine a thing which is positively charged here and a thing which is negatively charged here. Now, if I just set these down, how will they interact with each other? Well, we know that oppositely charged things attract, so if I just set them down here, they're going to tend to move toward each other until they're in contact. But what if I don't let them? Let's chain each of them to a little stake in the ground here. Okay, so they're not going to be able to move. So they won't. They'll sit there and, eh, I want to get, but they can't move. But that doesn't mean there's nothing going on between them. Now imagine that I set down in the middle a positively charged thing. I just set it down and move my hand away. What will it do? Well, it's going to be repelled from this one and attracted to that one. So what I think is going to happen is that this positively charged thing is going to start moving in that direction. But we know that things don't move unless a force acts on them. What that tells me is that between these two things, there is some sort of force. It's an electrical field that's going to exert a force on any charged thing that's in, that, that's in that field. It's not just like a wind going that way. If I put down a positively charged thing, it'll move that way. But what if I put down a negatively charged thing? It's going to move that way. Same force, but it affects positive and negative things differently. Now, I am not a physicist, and if you've studied physics, you know that what I'm about to say is iffy at best. But what I'm going to say is that between these two things, we have something you could call an electrical potential. Between these two unequal charge, this area of unequal charge, we have an electrical potential, which is sort of like saying there's a force here which will act on charged things and cause them to move in one direction or another. We can call that a voltage. We can say that between any two areas of different charge, there will be a voltage, which will cause charged things to move in one direction or another. So anytime there's a difference in charge between two locations, we could think of there being a voltage between them that will make charged things move, that will exert a force on them. So that right now that exists between these two separated charges. But let's go back to the cell that I drew before and see if we can think of any other way that that could work here. So let's say that this cell has a concentration of 100 millimolar sodium out here and 10 inside. And just for the sake of it, let's put the same concentrations of chloride inside and outside this cell. Now, when I look at the outside of the cell, does it have any overall charge? I can say I've got a certain amount of positive charge and the same amount of negative charge. 
So my conclusion is that outside the cell there is currently no overall charge. It's electrically neutral. And when I look at the inside, I could say the same. Same amount, of, there's equal amounts of positive and negative charge, so they cancel each other out, and the overall charge inside is also neutral, zero. So is there any difference in charge between inside and outside? I don't see one. So if we were going to measure the voltage between inside and outside, Let's make our little voltage meter here. We call that membrane. You probably can't see that because of the glare. This is membrane potential, which is also which is the same thing as membrane voltage. And it's often abbreviated VM. So this is going to be a chart of Vm, and here's going to be zero, zero volts. Right now, in this situation, there's no difference in charge from inside to outside. So the voltage between inside and outside is zero right now. We'll draw that. I wish I there it is. So our voltmeter is reading zero volts. Hopefully you're with me on that one. If not, feel free to pause, go back, look at it again. But the idea we're getting at is, what is the difference in charge between inside and outside? And right now, outside has no overall charge, inside has no overall charge, so there's no difference. But now I want you, I'm gonna move the, I'm gonna erase some of this to give me a little more room to draw. So just keep in mind that the red is sodium, and the blue is chloride. I'm going to put in a sodium channel. Just a sodium channel, no chloride channel, and that's important. And I want us to think about what, what is going to affect sodium's movement. Now, first we'll think about diffusion. We can see it goes from, that it's higher concentration outside than inside, which means diffusion We'll label that with a D, is tending to go inward. We'll represent that with a downward arrow. The size of the arrow represents how much it tends to move. You could think, if you've done vectors, this is meant to be like a vector. Now, what else might affect it? Well, if there were a voltage here, if one side of this membrane was more positive than the other or more negative than the other, that could affect it. Just like when we had those two charges and we put down a positive charge, it moved toward the negative one. If one side of this was negative, that would tend to pull the, pos the positive sodium ions toward it. But right now, there isn't any difference in charge. Both sides are neutral. Which means that if I look at electrical forces, there's no arrow, not inward or outward. So if I combine them, I'm going to label that EC. This is meant to be the electrochemical gradient. The combined forces of diffusion and voltage. If I add inward arrow to no arrow, my electrochemical gradient is inward. I've got an inward diffusion and no effect from electrical, so the overall movement is inward. So that means sodium is going to start moving into this cell. So here comes my sodium moving in. Overall, some sodium could be moving out, but like we talked about with the diffusion, most of the movement will be inward. Now here's where you've got to think carefully. What's that going to do to the charge inside the cell? I've got positive sodium ions moving in. I've added positive charge to the inside of the cell. If before I had equal amounts of positive and negative, and now I've got a little more positive, then I've got more positive than negative, which means now the inside is a little bit positively charged overall. And what did it do to the outside? I had equal amounts of positive and negative charge, but now some of that positive charge has moved in. So now I've got a little more negative than positive, 
which means now the outside is a little bit negative. Now there's a difference in charge between inside and outside. And that means there's now a voltage between the two. Think about what that's going to do to a sodium ion. Imagine that you have a sodium ion sitting here in the channel. What effect will this have on it? Think about that for a moment. Pause the video and think, if I imagine a sodium ion here, which way will this push it? Just that on its own. Will that push it inward or outward? Okay. I hope you did pause and look at and think about it because it's important that you do that. If you didn't, here's another chance. Okay. When I think about that, I think positive sodium ion will be attracted to the negative outside, which means this voltage is going to be pushing sodium ions outward a little bit. Now, right now, just a few sodium ions have come in, so that's not very strong. The outward push is weak, but it's not zero. So now, what am I going to get when I combine these? I've got inward push on diffusion and a weak outward push. That's going to make the inward movement a little less. So overall, I'm still inward, but not as much. The combined movement is now inward, but less strongly. Now, there's a few objections you may have come up with here. Number one, as those sodium ions come in, didn't it change these numbers? Didn't it change the diffusion? Doesn't that get smaller and that get bigger? The answer is yes, but not significantly. These electrical forces build up very, very fast. You don't have to move many ions to cause a big change in voltage. So the number of ions that actually move in is so small that we can ignore it for now. We don't have to worry about it. They, maybe this becomes 99.99999 and this becomes 10.00001. Does, not that important. Don't worry about it right now. Pretend, it, pretend there's no change. But I did build up a voltage. And that's going to act to slow down the inward movement of sodium. Now, another thing I want to point out is, if I'm measuring voltage, how, what does my chart do? Does my line go up or down? Is this a positive voltage or a negative voltage? I look at it and say, well, what do you mean, inside or outside? The problem is, the voltage isn't on the inside or on the outside. It's across. It's both. So I kind of have to consider both of those. Now, there's no obvious answer to that. So at some point in the past, somebody came up with an arbitrary rule. It's not based on anything. You just got to know it. They said, we're going to call voltage positive or negative based on the inside compared to the outside. So fill in the blank. The inside is more positive or negative than the outside. In this case, the inside is more positive than the outside. So this is a positive voltage because that's the definition. Because we shorthand, whatever the inside is, it's that kind of voltage. So on my chart, when I opened the sodium channel, my voltage started to change as sodium was coming in. And it started getting more positive. So now I have a membrane potential. And that's acting to push on the sodium, slowing it down from coming in as much. All right, let's let this go a little longer. Overall movement is still inward, so a little more sodium is going to come in. Maybe not quite as fast. The inward movement is slower, but a little more is going to come in, making the inside a little more positive and the outside a little more negative. My voltage is still becoming more positive, although not quite as quickly. The rate at which it's becoming positive is slowing down. Now think about this. Since these numbers aren't effectively changing, diffusion is not different. It's still inward. But my voltage is getting stronger. Which means when I combine these two, strong inward and moderate outward, I'll get weak inward. The movement of sodium is still in, but not very much. So next step in time. There's still a very slight inward movement, so we bring in just a little more sodium. Inside becomes a little more positive, outside becomes a little more negative. My voltage is rising slowly. And now I get to the point where that positive push outward that's acting on those sodium ions 
is just as strong as the diffusion that makes them come in. When I get to that point, what's the combined electrochemical gradient, the combination of these two arrows? If it's pushing in just as much as it's pushing out, there's no longer any overall movement of sodium. Once the inward movement of sodium stops, my voltage stops changing. And it reaches a steady voltage. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions here. First one, once those equal out, this charge goes away. It doesn't. This is, a, this is saying the inward push pushed sodium in until the voltage started pushing it out until those two were equal. But that doesn't push the sodium that already came in back out. It means I, now I've got something that's opposing any more movement in. It's sort of like saying, if I've got a lever here and the more I push on it, the more it pushes back. I push and I'm still stronger, but it's pushing a little. And I push more and, it, I, and I'm still stronger, but it's getting more. And I'll get to a point where I'm pushing just as hard as it's pushing. At that point, the position of the lever is now constant. It's not going down, but it's also not going back. So now I've reached an equilibrium where my push is just as strong as the backward push. Likewise here, I let sodium in, making the inside more positive, until that push outward balanced the movement inward. And then I stop getting any more positive. I stop pushing the lever down, but it doesn't come back. I stay at this positive voltage. In fact, this is a true equilibrium, kind of like when we had osmosis, where water moved over until there was enough pressure built up to counteract it. This is also equilibrium. Right now, the overall movement of sodium inward has stopped, and now sodium is moving inward and outward equally. So we're at balance. We're at rest, in a way. This voltage, this particular amount of positive voltage in this case, that's enough to make sodium be at equilibrium has a name. We call that voltage the equilibrium potential for sodium, abbreviated ENA. The equilibrium potential for sodium is the membrane potential, Vm, at which sodium is in equilibrium. It is also, if I put a sodium channel in the membrane, sodium will cross the membrane until the membrane potential reaches Ena. And at that point, it will stop. Sodium will have no overall tendency to cross anymore, and the membrane potential will stay at ENA. It's an important idea. So what we just found is that if I start with this situation and open a sodium channel, sodium comes in, making the inside more positive, until it's made it positive enough to push back so that no more sodium overall will come in. That amount of voltage that's enough to push back like that, we call ENA, the equilibrium potential for sodium. Now, reset the scenario. Put everything back the way it was. But this time, let's put in a chloride channel and see what happens. Now, I'm going to erase the voltage chart I have, but I'm going to leave this. This is saying that this voltage was ENA. Let's put everything back, reset everything. So now we're back to a membrane potential of zero. But now let's see what happens if we open a chloride channel. So what's the diffusion tendency for chloride? Well, it's still inward from high to low. In fact, it's the same amount of inward that sodium was. That arrow is the same direction and the same size. Right now, there's no overall electrical voltage on the membrane. We reset everything. So combined electrochemical forces are inward. That should be the same length. 
and sodium starts coming in. And what does that do to the charge inside the cell? Negative ion coming in makes the inside more negative and leaves the outside positive. So what kind of voltage is that? Remember, fill in the blank. The inside is more than the outside. The inside is more negative than the outside. So my membrane potential is becoming more negative. All right, next moment in time. I've now got a negative membrane potential. What effect does that have on chloride's movement? If the inside is negative, and this is a negative ion, it's pushing it out, attracting it to the positive side, repelling it from the negative side. So electrical forces are now pushing back, which means my combined movement is still inward, but less. So some more comes in, and the inside becomes a little more negative. Not quite as fast as it was. We're slowing down a little. Which makes that voltage stronger and the inward movement less. So a little more comes in. My voltage gets even a little more negative. And that then builds up that voltage until it's pushing out just as much as diffusion is pushing it in. And my combined movement is now zero. No overall movement, which means no more chloride is coming in, which means I'm going to stay at that voltage. I've reached a new stable voltage. And what do you think we call that voltage? The voltage which puts chloride at equilibrium. That is going to be, of course, ECL, the equilibrium potential for chloride. Notice that's a negative voltage. Now, if you want to think, of, if you want to try to think about this a little, I haven't given you a number. I haven't said this is X number of volts. There is a way to determine that. It's called the Nernst equation. It involves logarithms. I'll show it to you next time. Uh, you're, not, you're never going to have to solve it, although it's not actually all that difficult. But one thing you could say, one thing you probably can figure out if you think about it hard is this. ENA is some number of positive volts. What's ECL? Here, I'm just going to, let's just give it a number. Let's say ENA was 60 millivolts positive. What will ECL be? Here's how you might think about it. ENA was the voltage I needed to stop sodium's tendency to come in. Sodium's ratio is 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. It's got a 10 times greater concentration. So that's how strong it tends to come in by diffusion. So I needed 60 millivolts to stop that much diffusion. What's chloride's ratio? And what do you think chloride's equilibrium potential will be? That's something I want you to think about. Next lecture, I'll try to, I'll give the answer. And if I forget, just ask me during class. Then I want you to think about one more thing. So we've looked at the idea of ENA and ECL. Actually, two more things I want you to think about. If I change this number, if I make this 1,010, Will that affect ENA, the voltage I would need to put sodium in equilibrium? Will it affect ECL, the voltage I would need to put chloride in equilibrium? So that's one set of things to think about. The next is this. What will happen to the membrane potential if I open a sodium and a chloride channel? I want you to think about those. Try to come up with some answers, talk to me about it, Zoom me, email me, whatever, and we'll go over it in the next class. All right, that's the end of core concepts. Good job. And the next unit is the nervous system, which happens to be my particular favorite. Although I love all of the stuff in this class. I love physiology and I love teaching it. Gotta say, the nervous system is my favorite. So, hope that was good, and I will see you in the next unit.